When you love a subject, you start considering pursuing further studies and maybe a PhD program comes to mind, but there's a lot at stake when you're thinking about going to a PhD program. That's five to six years of schooling. Tuition at an elite program can be north of $44,000 a year. So over that whole time, that's $250,000 in tuition. Not to mention all that time you're out of the labor force, your family, what kind of job are you gonna have at the end? So many things are coming into play. So what I want to do in this video is explain to you why I chose to go get a PhD in economics and hopefully that will help you consider whether this is the right path for you. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we believe in the power of markets and economics to shape our world. So if you're interested in joining this community of people interested in and excited about economics, go ahead and hit subscribe. And by the way, did you know that I have a newsletter? Go ahead and look in the description below if you wanna sign up for my newsletter where I send out information on articles that I've read that I think are interesting and my own observations where I just help share the love of economics. Earthquake Popcorn Fellowship. Those are the three big things that contributed to me choosing to go do a PhD in economics. Previously, I had explained to you why I chose to study economics in college, and I talked about there's an emotional and logical balance on making that decision, and you want those things to line up. When I told you about choosing to major in economics, I focused mostly on the emotional side because I've given you lots of logic behind what's going on out there. In this video, I'm gonna go both. I'm gonna show you the emotional moments and the logical moments that led to me going Going on to get a PhD. And those three words, earthquake, popcorn, fellowship, that is the guide for my journey to getting a PhD. Let's start with the first one. It is January 2010. I am at a career fair trying to figure out what I might do for an internship or which companies look like they're going to be most interesting. And I'm walking around this packed place. I have in my eye on going to do a consulting job. I wanna do management consulting. Remember in my video about why I majored in economics, one of the things that I was interested in was a job where I'd be able to interact with people, maybe do some sort of teaching. And I thought management consulting was a good combination of the two. I'd have enough variety, I would get to see people, and I start going around looking for those booths with management consulting. But as I'm walking around, I don't feel like this is going to lead to a very fulfilling career path, especially because what's weighing heavily on my mind is what's happened just two weeks prior when the earthquake in Haiti hit. Like I said in that previous video, when I watched Wally, I was living in Florida working with my church. I don't think I mentioned though that I was working with Haitian immigrants. And so I'm in 2010, I have a deep connection with Haiti today, I still do. But at that moment, I'm just thinking about this huge earthquake that has just shook not only Haiti, but shook me personally. And a management consulting career just doesn't seem that fulfilling when I'm thinking about what's happened in Haiti. And I start thinking, is there a way that I could do something for Haiti, where I could do something that might improve Haiti or try to understand Haiti more? And I think while I'm studying economics, this is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, what could I do with economics that would help Haiti? And that begins to be the seed of my journey to getting a PhD, was that thought of, could I do something with economics that might help us understand Haiti better? Popcorn, let's get into that word. It comes just a few weeks after this career fair because I'm sitting in an intermediate microeconomics class and I am loving it. One of the assignments that we had received was to write up an economics idea, like some way of explaining economics in the world, or maybe even a research question that we might investigate. This is my second semester in my economics major I'm having fun and I'm just decided to get really into this paper. Like, and it's not even like a full paper. It was supposed to be just a one pager. And the question on my mind is why does popcorn cost so much at the movie theater? If you've read The Armchair Economist, you might be familiar with this question. He explores that question in his book. And it was one that resonated with me because I had worked at a movie theater in high school. And I just felt like this guy had the answer wrong. He had this whole, you know, cozy an argument that he's really diving into, and he really was missing the industrial organization of movie theaters. Now, I knew that box office revenues had a certain structure about them, that the movie theater only gets a little bit of box office revenues, and so they have to get more from their concessions revenues. And I just loved 
thinking through this and dissecting it and trying to figure out an experiment that I could run to tease out the mechanisms at play. And it's as I'm writing this paper that I find I really enjoy thinking about research and trying to think about causal mechanisms, what the economics of these things really are, what's going on behind the scenes. And because I love that so much, that's when I realize I want to go on and do a PhD. Now this is really important because it's a research question that leads me to go on and do a PhD. Now this research question itself ends up not being that helpful because that's not what I pursue while I'm doing research. But what you need to realize is if you do a PhD, the goal of that PhD is for you to be a research faculty. Now, not everyone who goes and does a PhD ends up becoming a research faculty, but PhD programs are designed to have people who are advancing research, who are doing cutting edge stuff, helping us understand what's going on in economics and training you to be in a faculty position where you will be in a college and you'll be teaching. If that is your goal, then maybe a PhD program is the right track for you. If you're just thinking, I want to pursue this more, PhD programs aren't really designed for that. There are other ways for you to go and explore a topic than just committing yourself to five to six years of graduate school. And that is, uh, I really hope to emphasize this because I get a lot of people saying, hey, I'm interested in this topic, should I go on and get a PhD? Only if you want to become a professor. That is the goal. Yes, there are other careers. That's fine, but usually those careers are for people who realize during their graduate school years that they don't want to go on the faculty path and they're just grateful that there are other paths for them to go. But if you know from the onset that you don't want to become a research faculty, you should already be hesitant about applying to PhD programs. Fellowship, third word, let's get where this is going and this is going to answer a lot of those high stakes questions I mentioned at the beginning. A few weeks after this, this is all happening within one semester, a few weeks after that assignment, I start investigating PhD programs. I start seeing, is this something that I want to pursue? And my two biggest questions are, how am I going to afford graduate school? And what kind of jobs do I have available to me afterwards? Will I be able to support my family doing a PhD? As I'm investigating, I have this amazing discovery that when you go and get a PhD in economics, even though that tuition is north of $200,000, $250,000, you don't actually have to pay that tuition. They offer you a fellowship. Almost every program that I know of offers you a fellowship to go and get your education. That means they will pay for your whole tuition and often they give you a stipend on top. Sometimes that stipend is totally free of commitments. Other times it might be conditioned on teaching or doing research. But either way, not only do you not have to pay tuition, you get some way to support yourself going through these years. Now you don't have to go into debt usually when you're going to a PhD program. I did actually go into a little bit of debt. That's another story entirely. And I've been thinking about sharing it with you. But what we realized at that moment was, wow, I could get paid to go get a PhD. That is fantastic. That was a huge burden lifted from my shoulders as I was considering that path. But there was still that other question of how much money would I make on the other end? Is it worth it? Is this something that I can do to support my family? I was planning on having kids. I didn't have kids yet, but today I have four kids. So knowing that I was get, planning on having a family, this was a really important question to me. Well, fortunately, as I was going through and looking up what were salaries for PhD economists, they are pretty good. The average salary at the time that I was looking was $100,000 or more when you graduate. I've actually done a whole video on professor salaries, which I will link up here. And those professor salaries in economics are all really good. You are you can be very well supported doing a PhD in economics and getting a faculty job. It's not like a lot of these PhD programs where you graduate and then you just don't have any job opportunities or sometimes they make you less employable because people aren't willing to pay for a PhD to be in this position. Economics is not like that. There are so many positions available. Colleges pay really well for PhD economists. And if you decide you don't want to do that, or if you end up not getting a job in academia, there are so many jobs available to you outside of academia. Now, I really wanted to be a professor and I might do a video on why I chose to become a professor. If that's something interesting to you, please let me know in the comments below. 
But this answered my question. I now had a way to pay for graduate school and that was the school was going to pay for me and I knew that I could support my family on the salary that a PhD economist makes. And that really pushed my decision when I said, yeah, I can do this. I can have a life going forward on this path. That's when I really took it seriously and I started taking the steps to go and get a PhD. Now I explained what those steps were in this video about how I got accepted into Yale and so I recommend checking out that or you can check out some of these other videos where I talk about this path of studying economics. But that is my story on how I chose to get a PhD in economics. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. We'll see ya.